Did you ever face a situation like this? You have been responsible for a module and you took all the effort to craft a clean design following all the important design principles. But then a change is requested and you realize, despite all the efforts you have taken, your design is not ready for this kind of change. You cannot simply add new code to satisfy the request. You have to modify the existing code. Imagine a software which allows visualization and analysis of complex graphs, such as the dependency structure within a software system. Such a graph consists of nodes and directed edges, which are kept independent from concrete rendering technologies like WPF or HTML. The actual rendering happens in the respective graph renderer. A simplified render function may look like this. So far, so simple. Now, for the next version of this software, a change is requested. It should be possible to group parts of such graphs into clusters. Unfortunately, the current design is not prepared for graph items other than nodes and directed edges. So to support clusters, we have to modify the existing render function. This change may look simple, but generally speaking, when modifying existing code, there's always the risk of breaking existing functionality. Furthermore, we have to find all the places like this where nodes or edges are treated separately, which always includes the risk of missing one of such places. And finally, depending on the change, it might be necessary to recompile and even to redeploy all depending modules. The fundamental issue of this design is, it violates the open-closed principle, which states, software entities, classes, modules and functions should be open for extension but closed for modification. This means, it should be possible to extend the behavior of a software entity without modifying its existing source code but by adding new source code. Sounds complicated? Here is probably the simplest example of the open close principle you have most likely used uncountable times already. This function filters a collection of items. It accepts another function as argument which defines the filter criteria. This function is closed for modification. Most modern programming languages provide such a function from the base library. And at the same time this function is open for extension by accepting different filter criteria. That's not really complicated, isn't it? So in essence the open closed principle states that abstraction should be defined between the immutable behavior of a software entity and the behavior which is allowed to be extended or changed. In object-oriented design, we usually do not use functions to define such abstractions, but interfaces or abstract base classes. One of the classic design patterns used to apply the open-close principle to a module is the strategy pattern. Therefore, we define an interface of one or multiple methods and pass this to the module, usually through the constructor. The module then uses this interface to delegate decisions or actions to the implementations of this interface and so allows the clients of this module to provide different extended behaviors in different contexts. Another classic design pattern used to apply the open close principle is the template method pattern. Here a class allows extending its behavior by providing protected virtual methods, often also called hooks, which could then be overridden by different derived classes. But actually, the open close principle does not require specific design patterns. In fact, anytime we apply the dependency inversion principle, we also apply the open close principle because we allow some high level module to be extended with different implementations of some low level module, as I explain in this video. Now that we know how to apply the open close principle, where do we apply it? I mean, for a given software entity, different kind of changes might be required in future which very likely require different abstractions at different places. Furthermore, applying the open close principle is not for free. It takes considerable development time and effort to design proper abstractions and those abstractions can increase the complexity of the software. So we definitely do not want to add abstractions everywhere just in case. This means we have to choose the kinds of changes against which we want to close our design. But how do we predict the future? On the one hand, we have to use our experience about the domain, our industry, the organization and our software system. On the other hand, we need to do some research and ask seniors and discuss with other team members. And we also need to interview domain experts and our customers. Finally, I would recommend to apply the open close principle only for those kinds of changes which are almost predictable based on our research and experience. In all other cases, I would strongly recommend to take the first bullet as Uncle Bob once said. That means we wait for the first change of some kind to appear and then derive an appropriate abstraction from this concrete use case 
to avoid further impact by similar changes in future. As this design tactic is quite reactive, we require fast feedback to make this approach work. The fastest feedback we will get from our tests, so we want to write them first. This not only ensures that our design has testability built in, experience shows that abstractions created for testability will protect us from other kinds of changes later on. In order to get fast feedback from our domain experts and even from our users, we should aim for short development cycles and even frequent releases. Last but not least, I strongly recommend to develop features first and required infrastructural modules along with the features to ensure that the infrastructure provides the abstractions needed, but nothing more. So having taken the first bullet and equipped with all the new knowledge, how could we now apply the open close principle to the graph renderer? First we introduce an abstraction for the concrete use case of rendering different graph items. As the iGraph item interface already provides such an abstraction to specific graph items, we simply add a draw method. In order to keep the existing node and edge classes independent from a concrete rendering technology, we define the draw method as abstract in these classes as well. We then create rendering technology specific derived classes which implement the draw method. Finally, we adapt the render function of the graph renderer and open it for extension of new graph items. Now adding support for clusters does not require any code changes in the graph renderer. This design is also ready for future changes of similar kind like undirected edges or nodes of different shapes. Before you now apply the open close principle to your design, I need to ask you one last question. Are you aware that introducing the open close principle without paying attention to the rules of healthy polymorphism can lead to fragile software? No? Then watch this video next.